Alright, this is John Kolo with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you and we have a very special interview for you guys today. We've got my friend Dr. Rick Dina who's been on a raw vegan diet now for 29 years. He actually started in 1987 and I myself have been doing a raw vegan plant-based diet now since 1995 so I'm going into my 21st year uh, this year and we're going to talk about a topic that's very important to the both of us is how do you maintain and stay raw for a long period of time you know you might see other youtubers on youtube you know that have been doing it six months a couple two one year three years and they're giving all these tips but i really want to give you guys good solid information from people that have really been doing this a long time and have a lot more experience that you could really learn from grow from and benefit from so we're going to ask uh, dr rick and he'll share with you guys the top three ways how you can stay raw for the long term. So Dr. Rick, what are these three ways that people need to know? All right, well I'm borrowing some information from a tele-summit. My wife, Dr. Karen Dina, and I gave a little while ago with, on, the, on the exact same topic, how to stay raw over the long term. And, and we've, we've got three basic reasons and you could go into a lot more details with each of those reasons. So number one is motivation. People have to find what motivates them. And so the thing is, if you're, if you're going along eating pizza, eating cheeseburgers, eating your donuts, and everything's good, life's great, why give up all the stuff that you like? There's no reason to. So people find all sorts of different incentives and reasons why they want to make some dietary changes in the first place. And those have to be compelling enough to get you to try something different and, and learn some new things and give up some stuff that you used to like. So for a lot of people, health is the main reason. So of course, weight loss is huge. Almost everybody out there in the world, so many people need to lose weight and literally it's growing all the time <laughs> in terms of the percentage of our population that's overweight. So, I mean, a healthfully implemented raw food diet can do that so well. And I do say healthfully implemented because there's a lot of kind of raw food diets out there that people gain weight on. So fruit and vegetable based, logical, sensible, good education, although that's coming up in a minute. So people want to lose weight. People oftentimes want to increase their athletic performance. I mean, that's huge. God, I've had so many people I consulted with who have said they started eating more fruits and vegetables and their marathon times were decreasing and they were recovering faster from their workouts and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, sometimes people also notice that their brain capacity is improved. It, it's dramatically better. So for example, my father-in-law is 90 years old and my wife, Dr. Karen, isn't here right now because she's helping him out. She flew across the country and his brain is functioning better now at 90 than it was, was previously at 85. Wow. And so she really helped him make some major changes in his diet. And he's, even though he's not doing nearly as much as we'd like him to, he's including more fruits and vegetables. And it's made a big difference in how quick his mind is and how sharp he is. And he's still living on his own. And it's his friend and neighbors are pretty convinced that if it weren't for her help, he wouldn't be on his own. And he probably wouldn't still be with us. So uh, a lot of us have noticed that our, our brains are the clearest when we're eating the healthiest. Um, a lot of times people find, for example, you'll, you'll see a lot of yoga people who eat a raw food diet. There's a, a big connection there because, number one, they're interested in athletic performance and flexibility. So they find that it's easier to get into complex poses and they can hold things longer and their strength improves. As well as there's a spiritual connection with yoga. So people find that when their body is clear and clean... They just feel more connected. And no matter what their take on things or their spiritual or religious views are, they just feel more calm and more, more connected to whatever they're trying to connect with. So that's a big part of it. Many people find incentive to improve their health when they are faced with some type of major health challenge. Okay, I've got high blood pressure. I've got high cholesterol. Um, uh, you know, what, whatever other issues are going on. And people don't always like the way they feel from the medications. Or they're starting to get angina pain and they know that that's going to lead to heart disease, for example. And they have grandkids that they want to see grow up. And, and, you know, life's good and they don't want to cut it short. So 
disease reversal is is a huge incentive that maybe is other than weight loss maybe one of the biggest reasons because it's not so easy again to give up your pizza and your hot dogs and all that stuff you like but when someone says when you you get educated and you realize wow are these things worth losing my life over wow you've got enough incentive now to give those things up and it, it's better to eat oatmeal and fruit smoothies and stuff like that in the morning um, and, and enjoy yourself rather than have bacon and eggs and, and not be around. So um, that's a big part of it. Then once people get healthy, they want to stay healthy. So they, uh, to maintain their health, they, they want to keep eating healthy. So that's another major incentive. Um, and then there's a few of us out there that are wise enough that we don't want to wait till we have a health problem. We've seen what's happened to family members. We see what's going on in society and we're enjoying being vital and healthy and youthful and we want to stay that way for a long time. So there's another good reason. So we're still on the number one uh, top reasons maintaining things long term is, is what motivates people. Yeah, what why? Gives them yeah, what, why, what motivates? I mean, I got into this because of my health. I almost lost my life. And that, and that, I didn't need any of the other reasons, man. I want to be here, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good enough, it's only one reason, but boy, that's pretty big. Stick around, you know, that's, that's huge. So, um, and, and going back to, again, with the spiritual connection and yoga that I was using in this example, a lot of people find that they feel better emotionally when they eat healthfully. I mean, people go out and eat, you know, Doritos all day and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's hard not to feel on edge and and whatnot. So emotional health can also be a big reason people find incentive. And then beyond personal health reasons, there's other reasons as well. So a lot of people don't feel comfortable having to kill something so they can live. So they just want to eat plants instead of, you know, killing animals. And, and I really can appreciate that. And then people also realize that, okay, if you eat some plants like this, you can get the calories directly from the plants. But if you feed these plants to animals, 96 or so percent, whatever it is, of the calories from these plants go into the animal's metabolism. And then we don't actually get those calories back when we eat the animal. So leaving a lighter footprint on the earth is a big reason also. And the more reasons you have stacked yeah. up, the more likely you are to stick with it over the long term. If health is your only concern and you're feeling pretty healthy, but someone says, oh, you need to eat fish for the uh, DHA and EPA, the long chain omega-3 fats, highly unsaturated fats that are extremely important, by the way, um, you might be like, no problem, bring on the fish. But if you're concerned about the planet and we realize we're overfishing and that's causing a lot of environmental destruction and that type of thing, and you also actually care about the fish themselves, you'll stay on a plant-based path. So you've got more reasons than just your health. Sometimes people find that they, uh, they get healthy, they're feeling good, but then, then some other things creep back into their diet and their joint pain comes back or their blood pressure goes up again. So the more reasons you have, the more likely you are to stick with it over the long term, all else being equal. So Dr. Rick, as much as I had, you know, almost losing my life as my main motivation to start, now that I've been doing this for over the years, I've seen and started piling on, like you suggested, right. other reasons. So that kind of gives leverage to me to stick with this diet. So instead of just having like one brick, you know, as a weight, I have like 20 bricks. You got a you know, whole foundation. A whole foundation. Yeah, like I'm building a pyramid here, man. And that pyramid's solid, man. It ain't going anywhere. And you know, yeah, I mean, I've, and I've experienced not only just doing it, but experienced like the different spiritual connections, connection with nature, wanting to conserve the planet, the planet's resources, and then being more concerned about that and opening me up to like solar power and not consuming all these natural gas and gasoline resources on the planet. And does all these things are super important. So as much as you might have one that's like the most important to you now, put them in order, make a list actually of what the most important ones. And as you go on in this journey, you'll learn other things and why it's so important to continue this and to keep it up. Yeah, that's such a good point, John. And I mean, no, for me, I wanted to lose some weight and get in shape and my brain was kind of cloudy and foggy. 
And once I started doing that, I started feeling so much better and I started thinking about the animals. I used to think those animal rights people were a bunch of wackos, you know, I don't want to hear them. But I, you know, I started to understand, I'm like, you know, that's a really good point. And then the, the planetary things and the spiritual stuff, I just, uh, yeah, it all starts to come starts together. To come so it's kind of nice. You get in through one arena and once you're in, or one avenue, then you get into the arena and you're, you realize all the other reasons as well. Right. So and the yeah. more of those you can connect to, the better. Absolutely. So yeah, that's number one. So what's the second way? Number two, and this is this is where my wife and I, what we do is our life's work is, is so critical, I think. And number two is education. Because people can have all the incentive in the world, but then what happens is they start on a plant-based diet and they're feeling good. And sometimes they don't do it right. They think that handfuls and nuts and seeds and all the gourmet food is going to be the healthiest for them. And maybe their health improves some, but not nearly as much as they were hoping. They don't get the goals they were looking for. And they're like, well, why bother giving up all the other stuff I like if I'm, I'm still on my blood pressure medication? So you've got to take the right approach. And there's, there's so many ways that people can get confused. They're lacking in nutrients. Sometimes they're not eating enough fat. Sometimes they're eating too much fat. They're afraid of fruit. You know, all, and, and then they're eating more fat as a result. And, and people are so confused. So number one, they got to find what works for them. That's absolutely critical. But then there's a whole other growing reason, a growing aspect of this, where things are working well for people, but they're not well educated enough to fend off, if you will, all the other stuff bombarding at them, like, where do you get enough protein? And what about essential fats? You need to have fish, right? And vitamin K2. Oh, you need your bone broth for that, because <laughs> if you're not going to get it, your bones are going to be weak, and you're going to, you know, get hip fractures. You vegetarians better watch out. And, and uh, what else? Oh, you got to cook your food for lycopene and beta carotene. Um, you got to, you know, vegetarians are deficient in, in vitamin D, and that's true, but just as much as the rest of the population. So, I mean, there's all these different, different things out there. Oh, iodine, you have to do this and go on these crazy, crazy mega dose protocols. And, I mean, there, there's just, and then, and then people say, well, you better eat fish. Or, so anyway, there's all these whole set of reasons by people not so informed who look at a raw vegan diet and think, oh my gosh, that looks too challenging for me. And then they think, okay, well, on the one hand, if it's right and they don't do it, they feel like they're doing something wrong. And that's tough. It's tough for everybody to look in the mirror and acknowledge their own issues and their shortcoming. What's much easier is let's make it wrong. Let's criticize it. So B12, D, essential fats, protein, you know, all that other stuff, uh, K2, uh, people, it's just easier to start complaining about that and putting it out. And then people want to get their own attention. So they just repeat the rhetoric and put that out. And those of you who are in earnest trying to learn about raw food nutrition, you tune into YouTube. And you see some good stuff from some of the good YouTubers, and you see a lot of nonsense also, and it throws you off the path. So proper education will, number one, get you on an approach that works the best for you, and number two, will give you the confidence to stay there because you will not get thrown off track by the people who are uneducated, yet who have loud voices and a lot of outreach. So the education part is so important. Uh, we teach a series of classes called The Science of Raw Food Nutrition. It's 100 hours worth of intensely packed information. We could turn it into 500 hours easily. People are just scribbling notes. It's, it's super dense. You know. So, Dr. Rick, besides like your 100 hours of courses that I know that people could go to and attend for actually a lot of money, and there's no substitute for going to 100 hours of education that you packed in even more information into, I know you have, you and your wife, actually, or mostly your wife, uh, Dr. Karen, wrote a book that I would actually encourage you guys to get that actually I have myself and it's probably the number one book I would recommend on raw foods that's available at this time. Actually, I haven't written, written my book yet, but it, it's solid. So can you tell people more about that? Because minimally, if you don't do anything else, get their book so you can get a good solid foundation of how to eat a raw food diet helpfully. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so first of all, for our classes, you spend a few thousand dollars and you have a lifetime of education. So many of our students tell us our our notes or references for them for years and years and years to come. And you think about that compared to being on medication for the rest of your life and dealing with all the side effects. So, I mean, first of all, I, I think it's an incredible lifetime investment and good value. However, 
that's not the right approach for everyone. And then so for 15 bucks on Amazon, you can buy Dr. Karen's book, The Raw Food Nutrition Handbook. Now I know there's lots of books on raw food nutrition out there. And a lot of times people hear a few things, they repeat rhetoric, it's in their book, they put a fancy cover, they get a marketing team, they sell a whole bunch of them. Um, I can tell you our book though is based on our 55 plus years of personal experience, tons of education, both formal and cool cutting edge stuff type of education. Um, and, and, and our clinical experience and our, our research experience. So it's all condensed into a basic yet done very thoroughly to lay the foundation book called the Raw Food Nutrition Handbook. So for 15 bucks you can get an enormous education about how to keep on this path long term um, that way. Awesome, yeah. So also I'd recommend uh, checking out Dr. Rick and Karen's YouTube channels. I'll put links down below this video uh, for that or those uh, links for his, their videos down below this video for that. And also, you know, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're not already. I give some pretty good, solid information, most of which Dr. Rick uh, would probably agree with. Maybe not everything. Uh, yeah, John, But we I'll, agree I'll, with, like, just, most just, stuff, man. Just to give you a plug, I mean, John and I have been friends since, uh, what, 1998 or something yeah. like that. And over the years, we're, we're just on the same page yeah. about so many things. So many things. And I, I'm glad that you are utilizing YouTube to get good information out there. And I would so much love to say everybody on YouTube is giving good information, but I just can't. It's just not fair uh, from someone who has been around the block a few times. And uh, so anyway, keep, keep checking out the, the videos. That's, that's good stuff. Thanks, Dr. Rick. So moving on to number three now on uh, how to stay raw long term. What's that? Yeah, so number one, we got motivation, talked all about health reasons, environment, animals, etc. Number two, education. You've got to know what you're doing. You can't be successful at anything if you don't know what you're doing. And number three, interestingly enough, is flexibility. Because sometimes people hear, they'll watch YouTube, go to a lecture, read some books, and it's like, there is the way to do it. <laughs> Dogma. This is the way, this is it. Everyone, humans have to eat the same way and you'll always find a segment of the population that that works great for. And then you'll find another segment of the population that that didn't work so well for. So if people are convinced there's only one way to do it, they do that way and they're not feeling good and it's not working for them, well, first of all, they might start blaming themselves if they're thoroughly convinced that's the way to do it. Oh, I must be doing this wrong. There must be something wrong with me. There must be something I'm missing. And then that's not about health. That's self-defeating. That's beating yourself up. Why should you have a dogmatic system that makes you beat yourself up? That's, again, that's not about health. Or sometimes they'll, they'll, then they'll go somewhere else. Oh my God, someone else has the way to do it. And it's a different way. They say opposite things. So then they switch over there. And then maybe there's some benefits to that, but then there's some drawbacks to that. That might not work either. What we have found over the years, like myself, my wife, John, so many other people we know who are long-term successful, healthy, raw food vegans, is they are flexible and open-minded enough. And oftentimes, even 10, 20, 30 years in, they're still learning new things that are helping them. And by trying this, trying that, understanding this, understanding that, making sense out of different things, and then doing some personal experimentation. Sometimes we can help guide people with lab work with that, what works for them and what doesn't. They find the approach that works for them. And they also enjoy doing it. They like eating the food, it's fun, and you feel good, and you get all the benefits. So that flexibility is just absolutely so key. It doesn't mean be so flexible that uh, you're off the path but it means learn the fundamentals and then find what works for you. You can enjoy it over the long term. Just such a critical uh, piece of the puzzle there. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. One of the things you know that you'll notice about me, and if you watch my videos from, I don't know, six years back when I started making them, is I've, I've changed what I do. Like, you know, it's not in any large way. I still eat raw plants, you know, fruits and vegetables predominantly, but I've changed things up a little bit. And you could see me in my journey on my YouTube channel changing things up, and I'm highly suspect to people that always keep keep it the same, right? Because there's always new information, new data, new research studies coming out. And I adjust as I learn more and get more knowledgeable about things in life. And I would always encourage you guys, you know, to, 
to work on always improving yourself, whether that's with your diet, your relationships, you know, with growing your own food, with, with whatever it is. Like, we should always strive to improve and make the world a better place, not only for us, but for future generations. So yeah, if something's not working, change and modify and be flexible in your approach is the main message. So, so Dr. Rick, I know you have a program coming up that's free, available for everybody. We're gonna have 25 long-term, 20 plus years of, for the most part, raw foodists and people that do a raw plant-based diet successively that you guys could all benefit from for free. So tell my viewers about this program and summit you have coming up. <clears throat> yep, so we uh, put together a program called the Raw for Life Summit. Number one, you can have a lot of life and vitality from eating raw foods. And number two, raw for life, keep it up for life. So like John said, we've got over 25 people who have been successfully and healthfully and enjoyably maintaining a either high to all raw diet for 18, 25, 30 or more years who have really stood the test of time and we interview all of these people. Each interview is like 45 minutes to an hour, someone a little bit over, and we ask each person, what does breakfast, lunch, and dinner look like? Why do you do what you do? Is your diet the same today as it was back when you started? And for most people, there's a certain foundation, but things have changed over time, so that flexibility comes in handy. John, you mentioned such a good point earlier with flexibility with anything in life, not just what you eat you've got to be flexible enough and, and change and, and see what works and what doesn't. So we find out what they eat, why they eat it, what gave them incentive in the first place, um, what kind of education they have, and what kind of flexibility they have. And it's just so revealing. And, and here's a perfect example. 29 years in, you know, doctorate degree, lots of education, lots of clinical experience. I learned a lot of new things talking <laughs> to a lot of these people. So. Um, it's called the Raw for Life Summit. I think we're going to put the link. Uh, yeah, right the here. Yeah, we'll put it right there for you guys. Put it right there. There it is. And um, yeah, you can hear from all these people and get their inspiration. And again, hear from the people who have stood the test of time, who it's still working for. And I'm going to speculate here that you're probably going to get some better advice if sticking with this long term is your goal from listening to people who have stuck with it long term <laughs> versus people who are newer. Yeah. Now, we were all new at some point, too, but, uh, you know, when, you, been around when the block. you take the new camp, some make <laughs> it and some don't. When you take the camp that people have been at it 20 or 30 or more years, they are all in the long-term camp. So can't uh, emphasize the value of that enough. Yeah, I mean, I definitely recommend. Once again, I'll put the link right here below, and then also there'll be a link in the description as well as in the comments. So click that to sign up for this free a raw for life health summit that you can learn and gain from. Now, the thing I want to say is that there's going to be like 25 different, uh, you know, people on this summit that Dr. Rick and Dr. Karen will be interviewing and have an open mind when you're listening to it. You may not agree with 100% of everything of any one person says, but there'll be nuggets, right? Pick out the things that make the most sense for you and start incorporating those into your life. Which is a central theme of the summit. Right. That, that one of the things that all the people do. <laughs> they don't all just do it one way. We have a variety of approaches, but we don't have anyone on there that's too dogmatic because most of the dogmatic people don't make it over the long term, <laughs> sorry to say. But you have to be committed, so you'll, you'll see how they find that balance. And, and, you know, not everyone agrees with everyone. My wife and I don't agree on everything. <laughs> believe it or not, believe that. A husband and wife don't agree on everything. John and I don't agree on everything, but we all have a certain foundation. And by the way, our lead-off <laughs> lead speaker is, is John. He's leading off the event because he's been 100% raw for a long time. A lot of people 99. know about him. 99.9. Well, a yeah. lot of nines, right? <laughs> we'll cut you a little slack there. I'm, I'm about 90% raw, and that, that's what works for me. All raw for you know extended periods, but then you know I have some steamed vegetables here and there. Um, so anyway, John's our lead off, and it's just uh, it's it's really a great event. And uh, I, I, again, I've learned a lot from interviewing all these people, and we'd like you to do the same. Awesome. So, Dr. Rick, why did you and your wife, Dr. Karen, decide to put this event on for everybody for free? Well, uh, number one, we'd like to tell people a little bit more about what we do. 
uh, we feel like in a lot of ways we've been the best kept secret in raw food nutrition for uh, many years. You know, we've spent a lot more time educating ourselves than we have marketing ourselves. You know, most people in, in the raw food movement, it's just the opposite. They, they go to a weekend seminar, they read a few books, you know, and then they're experts and then they spend a lot of money on marketing and they, you know, they have their channels, they do their blogs and, and, and they have a lot of outreach, but they know very little. So we've been like heavily weighted on the research, the clinical experience, the teaching, the education, the, the working with people. So that's number one. And number two, while we're at it, you know, a lot of these summits, they just, they just get the people with the biggest lists and say, let's get all these people so we can get the most exposure. And although we have some popular people with big lists and we're gonna get a lot of good exposure, it was really important to us to maintain the theme of the summit, to just find people who we knew were healthfully and successfully at this for a long time to be of the most benefit to all of you. So many of these things, you hear the one dogma, you hear the opposite dogma, you leave more confused than you were before you started. We didn't want that. There's too much of that out there and there, it's gonna continue. So we really wanted to provide something of value to really help you keep this up for a lifetime so you can keep getting all the benefit that all of us do, that we enjoy so much. It's such a central theme of our lives for, for good reasons because it enhances our lives and we want that for all of you too. Awesome, yeah, I mean, one of the reasons why I continue to make videos this day is just to share the knowledge and to help my fellow man, right? I mean, this is just good for you, it's good for the planet, it's good for the animals, it's good for so many different things. And, you know, I'm glad you guys are watching to this point of this video. This lets me know that you're really committed. So, you know, I want, I want you to click that link right down below and sign up for the summit that's coming up really soon. Don't miss out on any of the episodes, including the first one <laughs> that I'm in. All right, Dr. Rick, so any other uh, comments or uh, things you'd like to share with my viewers today? Find your motivation, stack up all those reasons, get some good education. We're not the only ones that do it, but you'll find some other really awesome educators on the summit. And uh, be flexible in your approach, see what works and what doesn't. Um, I gotta give a lot of credit to Tony Robbins, his yep. ultimate success <laughs> formula. Number one, know your outcome. Yep. Okay, you wanna be healthy, you wanna leave a lighter footprint on the earth, etc. Number two, start taking action. Eat more fruits and vegetables. And then number three, this is where most people start messing up, see if it's working or not. And if it is, keep it up. If it's not, then number four, change your approach and modify and be flexible and find what does work. And if you just keep going through that cycle and you go about it rationally and intelligently, you will be successful. And like John touched on earlier, whether it's your diet or anything, any other endeavor in life, that's the way to go about it, so. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Dr. Rick and I and Dr. Karen went to a Tony Robbins seminar together That's many right. years Unleashed ago. Unleashed the power within. Yeah, uh, man, walked over man. fire. We did. <laughs> right. It's great. All right. <laughs> so if you guys enjoyed this episode with Dr. Rick, hey, please give me a thumbs up to let me know. Also, be sure to click that link down below to uh, get to the summit, Raw for Life Summit, sign up for that. Also be sure to check the links down below to Dr. Rick and Dr. Karen's website. You can learn more about their educational programs as well as the, their book that I would recommend you guys purchase. And also be sure to click the subscribe button right down below. But while you're at it, I have new videos coming out every five to seven days. You'll never know what you'll be learning in my next video or what I'll be doing. I'm always <laughs> having a fun time. And also be sure to check my past episodes. I have several episodes with Dr. Rick you know, sharing with you guys some really good information on raw foods. And of course, all my other videos have lots of other good information as well that'll help you, you know, live a healthful plant-based fruit and vegetable strong diet for life. All right. So uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best. All right, this is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you and where I'm coming at you guys. Today is the Natural Products Expo West 2016 taking place here in Anaheim, California. This is the largest trade show of its